Hi guys, David Ornstein here. The following clip is a section taken from my podcast, the Ornstein and Chapman podcast. You can listen to the rest of the weekly show for free wherever you get your podcasts and of course ad free when you subscribe to The Athletic. I hope you enjoy it. Well, players took a knee before the Community Shield matches last weekend, but the long-term plan for how English football can help to fight racism is unclear. Ryan Conway has written about this for The Athletic. Ryan is with us now. From your piece, the Premier League, it would seem, has not decided on how to approach this at the moment. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah, I would think that is pretty fair indeed. It was decided that players in the men's and women's Community Shield would take a knee, but as you know, as far as the league campaign goes, um, it seems nothing has, has been determined. My understanding is that conversations and dialogue are yet to take place as to you know how we proceed for the 2020-21 season. Proceed with taking a knee or proceed with fighting racism or both? Uh, I mean, both. You yeah. know. Um, <laughs> the thing that we have now is after what we saw in the NBA, in the WNBA, in the MLB, um, tennis with Naomi Osaka, you know, boycotting her game, there is pressure to continue this this movement. And that's what it has to be. It's it's a movement. You know, I, I saw someone on Twitter say it's a movement, not a moment. We, we have to make that the case. And I think it would be an enormous own goal without the pun um, if the Premier League were just to revert to type you know we spoke to Sol Bamba recently and, and he said you know it, it's kind of just trendy for football to do this you know you roll out your hashtags and, and the commemorative shirts and, and stuff like that and then once the sort of dust has settled you know everything is, is reverted to type the real substance will be in the numbers it will be how many more black executives you see it will mm. be how many more black managers and coaches that, that you see it'll be punishments for racism stacking up with punishments for Nicholas Bentner wearing Paddy Power boxers. You know, st- yeah. st- st- stuff like that. That's the real, the real, real substance. But until we get to that point, I feel we have to keep this conversation going. People will ask, you know, what is the point of a knee? Well, you have to start somewhere. Colin Kaepernick in the NFL, to take that example, he kneeled four years ago. Um, people still didn't want to listen. The requisite amount of action has not been taken and as a result that led to the Milwaukee Bucks deciding that they weren't coming out of the locker room and that is the point of taking the knee it is a peaceful protest it is a starting point for change it's taken four years though hasn't it from Colin Kaepernick taking the knee to getting to the to the Bucks not appearing in a in a playoff game that's that's a heck of a long time and also Kaepernick was alone and doing it I know a couple of other players joined him eventually but Kaepernick was alone and doing it and and there will be plenty who argue that that cost him his career. So when Sol Bamba talks about it being seen as trendy here, there there aren't careers on the line in the same way that there were for Kaepernick. Yeah, and I think what Colin did took tremendous, tremendous courage. As a Green Bay Packers fan, I hated him as a player because he torched <laughs> me. But 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 that's but that's complete that's completely beside completely beside the point. I actually have a painting of him taking a knee hung up in my office um, because. That kind of courage to me, I can look at that and that kind of courage yeah. is something that, that, that resonates with me even on the toughest days. You're right, the Premier League, the EFL, you know, whoever has, has, has decided that players and refs and all this collectively taken, it kind of mitigates the risk. The true test will be when fans are allowed back in. We saw in MLS that, you know, some fans booed. A league with an image that wants to be squeak clean as the Premier League, I imagine that's not a very good look for them. This will be a true test for when fans are back in. If if things revert to type, but you say you're going to continue to support those who want to peacefully protest, you know, is a, you know, congregation of boos really good for the for the league? Also, the question remains that when do these players, if you are going to revert to, you know, not taking a, a mass knee pre-game well when does that player get the time to protest do you have to go to the ref and, and beforehand and say look I, I'm, I'm going to take a knee before kickoff do does the ref do, do all games deliberately get delayed sort of 10-15 seconds for say three o'clock kickoffs so whoever wants to protest peacefully can because mm. you know here unlike in America we don't play no anthems before any game so where is that space for any individual that, that wants to peacefully demonstrate like that. And at the minute, I'm not finding adequate answers. So from your conversations with the footballing authorities, it's going to be left to each individual what how they choose to 
make their feelings known. But as you say, if there's no universal way of doing that, the referee could blow the whistle to kick off and six players on one team could be taking a knee. Yeah, I mean, we, we saw that in the, the Champions League second leg, um, Manchester City versus Real Madrid. The referee blew the whistle and Raheem Sterling dropped to one knee yeah. and the game, just, the game just unfolded around him and Raheem Sterling, quite rightly, looked... Um, uh, very frustrated by that. Well, we've already uh, spoke about with Ryan uh, the walkouts that happened in America last week, including in the NBA in protest at Jacob Blake's shooting. Here is the Athletics' David Aldridge on the NBA Show podcast discussing the boycott and why change is necessary. The frustration I felt from the guys once we had this latest shooting in Kenosha um, was, I think, the frustration that all of us feel that we've done all this protesting and there's been all this kind of real realignment, I think, in terms of attitudes in, in the country with regards to Black Lives Matter and other things. And yet you see the exact same thing happen again to another black man. Right. And it's just, you just feel like every time you roll, it's like Sisyphus, you roll the rock up the hill and it rolls back right over you again and again and again. And you just get weary of that pushing up the hill. And I think that's where this came from was that kind of weariness that nothing ever changes, that nothing ever seems to get better. And then on top of this man being shot in Kenosha, you have armed militias with the apparent tacit approval of the Kenosha Police Department just going out and shooting protesters last night and killing two people. Um, and you just throw your hands up and go, well, what the fuck are we doing? You know, why are we doing this? It just, it just seems like it's, and, and you want to fight that feeling that nothing is going to change and I'm giving up and you don't want to have that be your kind of ending, but you have to get people's attention again. And I think that was what this was all about was getting people's attention, recentering people on why all of this happened in the first place. And I think that's where it came from. It's David Aldridge on the NBA show podcast. Ram, what's your reaction to that? Yeah, I listened to that podcast just after the protests um, and it moved me to, to tears, kind of moving me to tears a little bit right now. Um, obviously, if you, if you listen to the full thing, you, you know how emotional David gets about that. Um, rightly so. The boycotts of the Milwaukee Bucks, it was right. It was kind of a, a recentering of, no, we, you know, this this will not stand. We, we cannot continue to have this... Um, have this happen not just in America, not just in Britain, but in but in the world. Sport is a privilege. You know, we are privileged to to watch these athletes and um, do what they do. If Raheem Sterling tomorrow decided he was quitting football and was going to go flip burgers, if he decided he was going to go sell cars or or whatever it may be, he would still be a black man. You know, if Venus Williams chucked in the tennis racket, no matter where she went in life, she'd still be a black woman. And I, I think a lot of the times that's what football fans don't see they see a person representing their club, but that is it. You know, you wear X shirt, so you represent this club, which means you represent me. And I don't think that's a fair assessment of anything because in, 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 in no other walk of life does that really apply. And I, I think that's incredibly, incredibly unfair. People get the message distorted that saying Black Lives Matter means you align yourself with the official organisation. You don't have to be aligned with anything to protest racism. You don't have to be aligned with anything to protest any kind of inequality. And it is baffling to me, the resistance that is put up to equality. Do you think as well, I mean, you, you sort of, I mean, you mentioned Raheem Sterling there and you talk about the individual. I wonder whether our football over here needs, and Manchester City have been very good with, with Raheem Sterling on this and have encouraged his individual beliefs and personality to take the lead on this subject. There are lots of other areas where footballers aren't meant to give an opinion and we don't like individuality and we don't like opinion. And I was struck, I mentioned to you before we recorded this, I was struck by Anthony Lynn, who is the head coach of the LA Chargers, a black head coach of the LA Chargers, on a Zoom meeting with all of his players, saying that it is his job to encourage them to be the individual that they want to be and to stand up for their beliefs whilst at the same time trying to protect them as well. And I thought, I found that really powerful actually when, when he spoke to them. And I, I do wonder sometimes whether we are 
all guilty in football and in a lot of sport of not allowing players to be anything other than players. As you say, Raheem Sterling, whatever career he chose, would still be a black man with his opinions. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and I think sometimes the lack of senior coaches speaking publicly can be disheartening. Now, I, I made a very concerted effort to ask Philip Koku pre-game, you know, during just in the wake of the, the George Floyd shooting, um, I made a concerted effort to, to ask him about, you know, racial injustice in society because, and sometimes I think, you know, this is why it's important to have a diverse media. Yes. I'm the only black reporter that works that beat. So that affect, that affects me, that affects me personally on some level. And, and, and I want to know what that coach thinks of that. He gave an incredibly articulate answer, an answer which I was very happy with and felt that every black person at Derby County would be supported by their manager. And that, to me, is incredibly powerful. That, to me, helps me sleep at night a little bit better because he was willing enough to answer the question head on and he was willing enough to understand that black people in the world and some of those black people he manages, you know, some of those black people he he calls his staff are disadvantaged. And for me, that that's a big moment. I, I, now, I, you know, I, I don't claim to sit and, and just watch 24-hour news coverage all the day, um, sports news coverage all day. But for me, there, I was disappointed that there was not um, more questions being, you know, asked about that, or, or at least not asked for television. Um, mm. about about stuff like that. I woke up the morning after the Milwaukee Bucks protest and basically after the NBA had, well, they termed it postponed, but basically all their teams were going to yeah. boycott. So yeah. I, I, I love how they tried to soft, <laughs> softly word that. So after that round of playoffs, I woke up, you know, and thinking this has got to be the thing that everyone is talking about in UK sports media. How could it not be? Just because it happened in America, that could very easily happen over here. Do you think it might? That's a, that might be a very unfair question because you've got no idea, have you? Actually, no. Th- to thinking about it, that's that's a ve- that's a very unfair question to I have think, thrown you. Uh, no, no, I think I, I, no, I think it, I think it's it's fair that look, I think that the onus is on people like myself, um, people like my colleague Karl Anker, um, people like AD who's producing this right now. Um, to to keep this going, you know. Again, as we said with, with Raheem Sterling, if me, Carl, and Ada chucked this all in tomorrow and and did whatever we decided to do, we'd still be black people. It is tiring, it is exhausting, but I have a platform, I have a position in the media, and I must use it to speak on issues that are important. And if I feel those issues are being underrepresented, then I feel all the more duty to do that because otherwise I, 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 I don't just do a disservice to my industry I do a disservice to my family my family that came over in the Windrush generation um, my grandma came over in, in 1961 you know experienced awful racism she did not have the platform that I have so the onus is upon me in the media to do that and the onus will be upon a lot of black men and women to do that as as well we need allies of course we do and we you know and we've got them let's not pretend only black writers are black are writing about this because they're not that was then what i was going to say to you the onus it should be on me as well shouldn't it in in this situation as a white man who believes in what you're saying do you think the onus is on is on me and others like me as well i think it's on all of us mark yeah. I, I think i think it has to be it can be very self-righteous and it can be really self-indulgent at times to be like you know i'm the only one that's writing about this or it's me but really if, if we're gonna if we're serious about change in in all aspects of in all walks of life it has to be all of us pulling in the in the same direction and and when you you read or see something or, or listen to something uh, or and think no that this is this isn't right you know this isn't right at all i i don't believe that that represents the ideals that my politicians tell me that this country represents i don't believe that represents the ideals of of everything i am sold in this country it is on all of us to speak up and to take action and you know what sometimes doing that gets you in a bit of trouble as you alluded to some will believe it cost Colin Kaepernick his job but you have to you have to stand up for what you believe in as a person and you have to have hope that within your environment that allows you to do that on your platform that you have the support that allows you to to do that but it's on all of us